Yes, sir. Uh, question. Uh, you have mentioned earlier regarding the supplication. So when will be the time to raise the hand? Raise the hand. Um, because sometimes during prayer, especially Kudu, they're doing raising the hand. So no, during salah, the raising the hands is like this. Okay, so that's that raising the hand is not actually dua. This is because the sunnah is that you raise your hands to the chest or toward the, the earlobes. That's the sunnah. We're speaking about raising the hands in dua. When it, it's to be done randomly, you do it right here, the right hand. Okay, now give me in the right hand. Uh, you do it, Habibi, without trying to attach it to another act of worship. Once you say, okay, after every adhan, I have to raise my hands. After every nafil, I have to raise my hands. After every, every time I do this, once you associate it with another act of worship and you do it consistently, you have fallen into bid'ah. If you do it just naturally, it's a natural thing. Let's say we get in the car and we're traveling and I know the dua of the travel is accepted. And now it's the sunnah to raise your hand while making dua. I just raise my hands. You see? One day you're just sitting in the masjid, you're waiting for the iqama, and you want to make dua, you raise your hand. But to make it a habit, every time, every time, at this stage, after this act of worship, or before this act of worship, I must raise my hands, then you are adding something that the Prophet ﷺ didn't do. You see the criteria? Inshallah. That's a nice piece of paper. Where do I begin? After the Friday, uh, two separate questions. Yes? Okay. After the Friday khutbah, when the Imam does the dua, should one just say Ameen without raising the hands? Precisely. Precisely. Not the Imam, nor the Ma'moom, should ever raise their hands in Jumu'ah. And one of the Salaf, one of the righteous predecessors, one, the one given khutbah, raised his hands in the dua, he actually stopped him in the middle of the dua. And he made dua, he said, you know, may I, I don't remember the exact words, but it wasn't very cool. He wasn't happy with him. He said, verily, the Messenger of Allah never did anything beyond raise his finger in dua. So you don't raise your hands as a khatib, and surely, surely the ones who are attending the khutbah should not raise their hands either, be it men or women. This is not from the sunnah, the sahaba never did that. And their way is the best way. You can say ameen with a low voice. Not screaming in a, you know, uh, unanimously as they say, or in, in unison. All of us together we say, Ameen, Ameen. This is not from the Sunnah either. You just say, Ameen, Ameen. On your own. Not as a group of Muslims. Second question. Should one take the good and leave the bad from these people? Such as Arabic Tajweed and general benefits that can be taken from them. And stay away from the innovations. Well, if you are a student of knowledge, you are well, you know, firmly grounded in knowledge and you have the means to do so, even then it is, uh, it is advised that you don't and you get it from the people of the Sunnah. Let alone if it's one of us, laymen. If one of, it's one of the regular people, whether it's a male or female, then for sure we should not refer to them because you don't know, as they say, the poison will be in the cake. You don't know where you will learn the bid'ah. You don't know where you will be misled because you don't have any reference, you don't know any better. So my advice to you is no. Alhamdulillah, Allah has sufficed us with many people on the sunnah who teach tajweed and who teach Arabic and who teach everything in general. We do not need to refer to the people of innovation to learn these sciences. We do not need to do so. Allah has sufficed us because you don't know where you will be led astray. And as we know from the righteous predecessors like Muhammad ibn Sirin, rahimahullah, who died in the year 110, he was sitting down with some of his students, some two mubtadi'ah, two from the people of innovation came in and they wanted to speak to him. He said, Im la anni aw la aqum. Either you will leave or I will leave. Either you will leave or I will leave. So they said, let us just read some Quran. He said, not even Quran. Don't even read any Quran. Either you will leave or I will leave. When they left, his student said, Ya Shaykh, what is, what is wrong with them reciting the Quran? He said, I was afraid they would read the book of Allah, twist the meaning in it, and the sickness would remain in, it, in my heart. They will, they will cause some deviation in the ayah, which will remain in my heart. I don't need to hear this. Either you will leave or I will leave. Now today this is a little tough because you know, predominantly the innovators are more than the people on the sunnah. So if you do this, you wind up boycotting the Muslims. We don't want to boycott the Muslims. We want to call them to the sunnah. But as for us, we take the knowledge from the people of the sunnah. I can give you references and substitutes for all of these. 
that you can learn without having to take their knowledge from them. Wallahu ta'ala ala. Any other question? Yes? This is a big bid'ah, which I used to do almost all my life. Imagine we would, we would actually, we would desert the graves, which is a sunnah, to visit the graves on the day of Eid. The day, of, the day where you're actually supposed to have fun, we go to the grave. People go to the grave on the day of Eid. And the grave is actually a moment of, you know, not a moment of, 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 of entertainment, per se. So this is, I mean, and it's not from the Sunnah. The Prophet have never visited dead people on Eid, right? We had Salatul Eid. And the Fatiha, I remember I said, Fatiha for most people is fill in the blanks. Anytime they don't know what to say, they squeeze the Fatiha in. It is not from the Sunnah to recite the Fatiha at the grave of any dead person. It is not from the Sunnah to recite the Fatiha upon a dying person. It is not the Sunnah to recite Fatiha when you get engaged or married. It is not the Sunnah to recite Fatiha in many different cases where people do it. When can you recite the Fatiha? When someone is sick and you want to do Ruqya on them, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha. When you are in Salah, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha. When you teach your children, you recite Surah Al-Fatiha. That's it. But to go on and add it everywhere, no habib. And anyone who claims otherwise, as Allah says, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Say, produce your evidence. Show me when did the Prophet ﷺ first go to the graveyard on Eid. Then show me when did he pray, use the Fatiha or recite the Fatiha at the gravesite. When they give us these two evidences, tomorrow all of us will go together. This next Eid, I promise. But they will not be able to do it because it's not from the Sunnah. Inshallah. Yes, sir. Uh, some of the people say, the all elders, that uh, reading the Ruth Sharif a lot is very nice, especially on the day of Friday. What's Well, the Prophet وسلم, confirmed that. Saying, sending plenty and abundant of salat and salam is definitely from the Sunnah. One of the Sahaba said, you know, أَجْعَلُ لَكَ مِنْ ذِكْرِ you know, نصف Shall I, you know, my remembrance to Allah, shall I make half of it, a quarter of it first, like, you know, sending salam on you? He said, you know, that's fine and you can add. Anyways, he continued until he said the whole thing. He said, when really Allah will forgive you sin and he will suffice your need. So there's no harm. He said, for example, you know, on the day of Jumu'ah, this is a special day and he mentioned the virtue of Yawm al-Jumu'ah. فَأَكْثِرُ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ مَعْرُوضَةٌ عَلَيْهِ So then send a lot of salam on me on the day of Jumu'ah because it will be presented to me by the angels. Allah will return his soul to him so he can return the salam to you. No doubt, akhi, no doubt that it is a sunnah to say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabiyyana Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim until the end. No harm. But not we come together in a circle and we do it in unison and not in any other innovated formulas, right? And not by thinking that, you know, the Prophet Sallam will answer our dua by saying that. So if we take away these shirki, you know, approaches, then yes, that's the sunnah for sure. What about reading uh, a lot of the Sufi people? Uh, they say that you should read Surah Al-Fatiha continuously. No, 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 no. This, 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 there's nothing from the sunnah which encourages the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha in particular. Not, I've read by the grace of Allah the tafsir of the ulama on this because I delivered a lecture on Fatiha. No, no sound reference about doing it abundantly in this fashion. No doubt, if you're doing it as a ruqya, but to walk around just saying Surah Al-Fatiha just like that, you know, then that, that's extremism in, in, the, in, the, in that. If you try to seek remedy, we 